house of science fiction. Television. Yes, television. The 1970s. We had three channels and we had to wait for repeats to see things. But every Saturday there was the magic of the lounge cinema. In 1919, on the 16th of October, a cinema was built in the area of Headingley, near uh, Headingley Cricket Ground. And now this cinema survived the Second World War. <laughs> it survived recession in the 80s. It survived many things, but to me, this was always a magical place. It had a capacity to sit in over 831 people, and over the decades, they reduced it to 483 to increase comfort. But what was unique about this cinema in Leeds was the balcony and the stalls. Now my memories of this place are very special. I used to go here every Saturday in the 70s. I went there for about five years and my parents used to drop me off Saturday afternoon to the children's matinee. It was amazing. We used to walk into this place, the children's film foundation was on and adventure serials and all these magical films they'd show about kids fighting crime and saving the world. And I was, that afternoon, I was one of them kids. Going into this place was a magical kiosk full of magical treats. And my parents waved bye-bye to me as I went into this world of adventure and excitement, queuing up and screaming. I made friends here. We were all ready for the action for Saturday afternoon and a big adventure. Our parents never understood. This was our time. You know, with the monotony of school all week and putting up with all that, this was truly a day of magic. I used to always sit on the balcony. I used to be up there with my Kiora and my Cracker Jack popcorn, looking down, absolutely amazed. And up in the projector room, They'd bring the magic, the beams of light would go onto the screen. Now the screen was 48 foot big, and a part that was quite big at the time, with beautiful Victorian decor and chandeliers on the ceiling, and red chairs. This place was, it, it was just magical. I remember the lights dimming, they go down slowly, and the red curtains had opened. And, and we'd see the children's film foundation logo come up with pigeons in Trafalgar Square. And it began, first you get cartoons, like these wonderful cartoons. Then we get an adventure serial, probably Flash Garden or the Monk on Ghost Island. Each week a bunch of kids trapped, trying to get off this island. And this villain it would foil their attempts, a six part serial. And then we get, some trailers, in come the Pearl and Dean. You remember it all shooting out at you. It was just absolutely insane. And then they'd show films. I remember trailers for like Walt Disney films, like Captain Nemo, you know, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. We're all like Disney films back then. You know what they advertised. Uh, and then we'd go on to the weekly adventures there. Would Flash Gordon survive his other battle with Ming? We're all there and then they come into disaster until next week when we're all hooked. And then we get the film, The Boy Who Turns Yellow. Each week we get one of these crazy films. It would either where somebody, some villains have been up to something and some kids had seen it and nobody believes them and then they investigate the crime and you'd be there eating away your Cracker Jack popcorn, drinking your Kiara, screaming that the baddies have got away with it. Or it could be an alien from outer space. You know, each week one of these films, it was like, it was some kid taken out of reality and, and thrust into these crazy situations and then all they'd solve the problem and all the kids would save them and they'd become heroes at the end of each week. This is how you want it to be, you know, because you've got out of home for four hours every Saturday afternoon, not being dragged around the shops with your parents. 
because they didn't want to put up with you screaming and carrying on wanting toys or wanting this. My parents dumped me off in here because they knew they'd get the peaceful afternoon. I didn't care. I was fighting Ming the Merciless and saving the universe. But the lounge cinema is so much more. It, it was the place as I grew up over the years. I, I used to meet my friends here when I became an adult. I, I went to saw Batman here. I saw Star Wars here. I saw many great films over the time. Even when I got my first girlfriend, we went here. You know, it has so many memories. Like all things, everything comes to an end and in 2005 the lounge cinema finally shut. They opened the multiplex down the road which killed it. And people stopped going there and the lounge just fell into like it was a very small loyal audience. Attempts were made to save it but it's gone. It's now flats now, to turned it into luxury apartments. I walk past it and I always have a tear down my eyes. And that's what happened. Only like, luckily we have memories of this beautiful place. And the lounge is gone. It's now flats. But there is one cinema around the corner called Cottage Road. It's sister cinema. It's still going to this day. At least we have that. But I will always have the lounge cinema and my memories of the Children's Film Foundation and the amazing films that were shot there.